Welcome back to the Hard Box News Corner. Time to wrap up all the interesting topics from the week, give our thoughts on a couple of rumors and recharge the mustache for another week of hardware testing coming up. Although maybe I need to transfer some of that juice to Steve because he's got, yeah, some very busy times coming up with several releases. Anyway, let's see what has been happening this week in the news. Intel apparently thinks that what their CPU lineup needs right now is another processor. After launching Comet Lake S earlier this year for desktop platforms, including parts like the Core i9-10900K and Core i5-10600K, Intel has been on a rampage launching all sorts of other chips to ensure there is as much product segmentation in their lineup as possible. By my last count, there are 27 desktop processors in the Core i3 range and above to go with a further 11 Pentium and Celeron chips, which is getting a bit crazy at this point. We have regular chips, K chips, KF chips, F chips, and T chips. In my opinion, this makes buying a CPU pretty confusing for the average consumer. Anyway, earlier this year, we got the Core i9-10850K, which is a lower clocked version of the 10-core Core i9-10900K that Intel has listed at a lower retail price. I say they've listed it at a lower price in ARC because, well, you can't really compare the 10850K to the 10900K easily because the 10900K is consistently out of stock or sold at an inflated price. Same as the 10900KF. Presumably the lower clocks also allow Intel to get better yields given the full 10900K is listed with an aggressive 5.3 gigahertz boost target. This month, Intel has quietly rolled out a completely different processor in a different segment of the market. It's the Core i3-10100F, which complements the existing Core i3-10100, a Comet Lake launch day CPU, by offering a no iGPU version of this chip at again, a lower listed price. Aside from disabling the iGPU like other F-series chips, the 10100F has the same specs as the 10100, so we're looking at 4 cores, 8 threads, a 3.6 GHz base clock, and 4.3 GHz single core turbo clock, with 6 MB of L3 cache, and a 65 Watt TDP. What makes this CPU somewhat interesting is Intel has listed a recommended customer price of $79 to $97, making it a sub $100 US dollar CPU. This is unlike the 10100 non-F, which has a recommended price of $122. So for those that don't need the iGPU functionality, say you're building a dirt cheap gaming rig, then the quad core 10100F becomes a more attractive offering. That said, the recommended customer price is really the actual sale price, while the 10100 non-F is currently being sold for about $120, so pretty close to the recommended price, parts like the 10850K, 10600K, and even the 10300 are all being sold above the recommended price. So it's possible the 10100F launches for above $100, we just don't know because honestly, Intel's recommended price guide isn't that useful, but expect around the $100 mark. This could make it a somewhat reasonable option for those wanting to build a dirt cheap gaming PC, especially because AMD's options in the market are currently priced above MSRP. The Ryzen 3 3100 is usually a $110, $120 chip these days, while the Ryzen 3 3300X kinda doesn't exist. If you want anything Ryzen that's below $100 or even around that mark, you're looking at like the Athlon 3000G, Ryzen 3 3200G and the like. The Ryzen 3 3100 is supposed to be in that group, but it isn't right now. There are of course a lot of other things to consider here, like the platform support, motherboard choices and all that sort of thing, including the actual retail price of the 10100F. But it does sound more compelling than Intel's previous cheapest quad-core desktop CPU, which coincidentally is actually Intel's most popular chip on Amazon. It's kind of a strange world where Intel is competing perhaps the most successfully at the lower end of the market with more value-oriented products, but here we are, 2020 is a weird year. In other CPU news, AMD is set to bundle Far Cry 6 with upcoming purchases of some Ryzen 5000 and 3000 series processors. At this point, the bundles have been revealed quietly, or perhaps discovered through AMD's website, so I'm sure a more formal announcement will occur at some point, but anyway, let's work through them. The first bundle concerns Ryzen 5000 CPUs, simply called the Ryzen 5000 series processors game bundle promotion. Catchy title. Basically, if you purchase a Ryzen 9 5950X, Ryzen 9 5900X, or Ryzen 7 5800X from launch day on November 5 through to the end of 2020, you'll get a free copy of Far Cry 6, which you'll have to redeem no later than January 30, 2021. Of note here is that the Ryzen 5 5600X is not eligible for a free copy of the game. 
The second bundle is called the Ryzen Equip to Win Game Bundle Promotion, and it concerns Ryzen 3000 CPUs. If you purchase a Ryzen 9 3950X, Ryzen 9 3900 XT, or Ryzen 7 3800 XT from October 20 through the end of 2020, you also get a copy of Far Cry 6 for free. Standard stuff about needing to buy through an eligible retailer, and all of that applies here. Also note that for the 3900 and 3800 series parts, you will need to buy the XT model that is currently on the market. This bundle deal will be finishing a bit before Far Cry 6 actually comes out. The game is scheduled to hit Windows, current and next generation consoles on February 18, 2021. So buyers should have their new Ryzen processor in their system well before the code will actually be usable. But those value adds are neat for some customers, so I'm sure some buyers will appreciate it, especially for those new Ryzen 5000 CPUs. NVIDIA has decided to temporarily end direct sales of the GeForce RTX 3090 and RTX 3080 Founders Edition cards through their website, at least in the United States. This is in response to feedback the company received around the NVIDIA online store, and they are working to improve the experience for buyers. For now, NVIDIA will instead be offering the FE cards just through Best Buy in the US, while European customers will still be able to purchase FE cards through the NVIDIA store. I don't really get the reasoning here to be honest, especially as NVIDIA are continuing to sell FE cards through their store in other regions. Why did they need to only end direct sales in the US and instead push them out through Best Buy? What was the feedback that meant the US store had to stop selling the cards but the European site is still good to go? It doesn't make a whole ton of sense unless there is literally so little stock of the cards that they can't fulfill any significant number of orders through both the Nvidia store and Best Buy. And honestly, I guess with the way this launch has gone, that's not a totally unreasonable suggestion. It doesn't seem like this announcement has been well received either, with the post on NVIDIA's forums receiving a significant number of downvotes. There is still a lot of frustration around the way NVIDIA has handled this launch and the extreme lack of supply, although NVIDIA isn't exactly alone in having a significant PC component launch. See demand outstrip supply, this does happen quite often. One rumor that has popped up this week and has generated a fair bit of discussion is talk around the AMD Ryzen 5 5600. We've had a few questions asking about this. There's been some chatter in our Discord community, so I'll give some thoughts on the situation. But first, I want to preface this by saying we haven't been able to confirm any aspects to this rumor independently, so we have no idea whether it's true or not. Because of that, we strongly suggest you don't believe every or even any aspects to it. So this rumor was posted by one of the many Twitter leakers out there and has two main components. One is that AMD will allegedly be launching the Ryzen 5 5600 non-X processor in early 2021, at the same time AMD releases BIOS updates for Zen 3 support on 400 series motherboards. The second part is the CPU will supposedly cost $220. US At this stage in the launch cycle, I don't think it's unreasonable for someone to have information on the launch date and price of another chip in AMD's lineup, but that's not to say this rumor is accurate because again, we just don't know. But I do think it's very likely we will be getting lower cost Zen 3 processors in the coming months, with the Ryzen 5 5600 being a particularly obvious candidate. When we spoke to AMD about Zen 3 CPUs around the launch, they certainly did not rule out adding more CPUs to the lineup, they just didn't want to talk about future products, which is the standard response we usually get. I also perfectly understand the interest in a product like the Ryzen 5 5600. While a lot of people sounded impressed by the performance AMD showed at their launch day event, clearly one of the main discussion points was the price. Launching new CPUs at a higher price wasn't received particularly well, with many people concerned especially by the price hike in the 6 core range. The cheapest Ryzen 3000 CPU with 6 cores was the Ryzen 5 2600, available for just $200, while now we have the 5600X at $300. That's a big price increase. It is only $50 more than the 2600X, but understandably, some Ryzen fans were disappointed there wasn't a CPU announced in that wildly popular $200 range. But again, the initial launch of Zen 3 seems more focused on high-end parts, and I expect AMD will release more budget-oriented processors later, which should include a part like the Ryzen 5 5600. What I'm not sure about is the price. $220, it could be correct, it could be false, who knows. What we do know is AMD likes to monitor closely the market for metrics like value and performance per dollar and set their pricing accordingly. Where the 5600 ends up might be a response to how the market reacts to their other Ryzen 5000 series products, as well as what Intel is doing at the time. Microsoft has spilled the beans on a feature AMD is set to introduce with the Radeon RX 6000 series. 
In a blog post on the Microsoft website, the company has unveiled that the RX 6000 series will support hardware-accelerated AV1 decoding, joining NVIDIA and Intel in supporting this new encoding format. NVIDIA supports it with Ampere GPUs, while Intel does with XE graphics. AV1 is an important next step for video transmission as it promises to be significantly more efficient at compression relative to existing formats like H.264, VP9, and HEVC. It also does this while being royalty free, unlike with HEVC, which is one of its downsides. But the only way it will see significant adoption is if hardware can actually decode it efficiently, so having new GPUs that can do it natively is very important. AMD seems to be joining the party with the RDNA2 architecture. What's interesting here is that the RX 6000 series apparently will support AV1 decoding, while it isn't listed as a feature of the Xbox Series X, which uses AMD's next gen architecture as well. It will be interesting to get a further explanation around that when AMD is ready to detail more elements about RDNA2 and their new GPUs. Earlier this week, there was a bit of chatter suggesting ASUS would not be supporting Zen 3 processors on some of their X470 and B450 motherboards. This story originated from an email ASUS support provided to a customer informing them that their Crosshair 7 Hero and X470 motherboard would not support the Ryzen 9 5900X. The support rep suggested the buyer upgrade to either the Crosshair 8 Hero on X570 or any ASUS B550 motherboard. As it turns out, this was yet another case of a support rep not really knowing what they are talking about. After the story blew up, ASUS confirmed that, in fact, ASUS will be providing Zen 3 BIOS updates for their X470 and B450 motherboards as per AMD's schedule, which should see those boards get support in January 2021. Simply put, ASUS said, the original report was based on incorrect information. So that's put that story to bed. No need for ASUS motherboard owners to panic. ASUS claim they will be supporting your board with a BIOS update next year. And final topic for this week, Video Cards has received a photo of one of Intel's upcoming Alder Lake S processors. This line of CPUs is set to launch in the second half of 2021, and will feature a hybrid CPU design similar to Lakefield, with both high-performance Golden Cove and high-efficiency Gracemont cores. It will also be the first desktop line based on Intel's 10 nanometer Superfin process node. Anyway, these new chips require a new socket, and Intel are going with LGA 1700 based on current rumors. The picture of the CPU shows a taller socket than we are used to for Intel's mainstream desktop line, with a higher pin density as well. The CPU overall looks to be larger and rectangular in shape, although there's really no other information we can gather from the photo, aside from rough dimensions. Old Lake is expected to bring other new features to the platform as well, possibly including stuff like DDR5 memory. It won't be the very next CPU lineup from Intel though. The company is set to launch Rocket Lake in early 2021, which will still be based on their 14 nanometer node. Anyway, that's it for this week's news corner. Those are the stories that I thought were interesting from this week's hardware news. If you're interested in getting this segment in your inbox every so often, you can subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, do all that good stuff. You can also support the channel through our Patreon page. Links are in the description below, and I'll catch you in the next one. <laughs>